on set. I mean, there's stories out there saying uh, that you and Christopher Reeve uh, did not get along. You know what? People have taken shit so far out of context. You know, we had one disagreement in four years. Uh, so I don't know very many people that worked together yeah. as tightly as we did for the period of time that we did that one altercation that didn't happen exactly. during that period of time. Yeah, so that so we had one altercation. Of course, it was you know it could have been very serious. It turned out to be kind of comical, but. Uh, <laughs> It was, uh, so it's I all- had a very serious father. My father was a very serious gentleman, and uh, and we used to eat. I, you know, had a, an Italian restaurant in, in London that was owned by friends of mine, and they were starting out. And so we used to bring, I used to bring all the people from Warner's in there to eat while we were, film- while we were filming. And uh, Christopher and everybody with the food was brilliant. Everybody loved the place. It just be, became a paparazzi joint. <laughs> and uh, Christopher was in there one night talking about things he shouldn't have been talking about. And the guy called me on the phone and he said, how well do you know this guy? And I said, well, what are you talking about? He said, we're talking about your father in New York and mafia and this and that. And I said, oh, shit. So uh, the next day I, I took him into a room by ourselves and I, and I had a conversation with him and, and I thought we sorted it all out and, and as soon as we got out in the hallway with a bunch of people around, he started, you can't talk to me that way. I'm like he was Superman. Yeah. <laughs> I said, yo. So I put him against the wall, and I was just about, I was getting ready to smack the hell out of him. And Richard Donner got up and whispered in my ear, and he said, not in the face, Jack. Please don't hit him in the face. <laughs> and then I started laughing. I dropped him on the floor, and I just walked away. I said, you know. Yeah. Kind of ridiculous. You know, kid, you know, he's just a kid. He was a, you know, Christopher. There will never be another Superman like Christopher Reed. Right, I agree. He played Clark Kent and Superman to perfection, and he did that because of the direction of Richard Donner. Mm-hmm. That was his first movie, big movie, and Donner brought something out of him that he never did it again. I'll tell you that. He never got that kind of performance in anything else he ever did, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Donna brought something out of him, that, and it worked, and it really, really worked. And I don't care who they did, they, they just, they'll just never find another person that did that crossover so well, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, And, and just to you know set the record straight, like we were talking earlier, it, it, again, how the press fucked shit up, and they said, you know, you— and Christopher Reeve didn't get along at all, but is, you want to say here that uh, it was a one-moment type of deal, and that was it. Yeah, I mean that's that's the only time that, you know it was. I didn't. We, I mean, we weren't bosom buddies. I mean, he became a nicer person after he got hurt. Did you did you uh, did you see him much after he got hurt? Did you get a chance to? No, I, well, I was traveling around a lot. I lived in Europe, mm-hmm. so I didn't really see him that much. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, uh, we we talked every once in a while. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, he was, uh, you know, he was much kinder to people after he got hurt. I think he had a realization factor. I mean, oh yeah. Much, you know. Prior to that, I mean, he would leave people waiting for him and things, and he wasn't kind to a lot of kids at times because he'd leave them waiting for them to show up somewhere and stuff and. And you don't do shit like that, you know, especially a uh, person who plays an icon like he did. Right. He's, he's student, so, but, but that, not me even to judge him. He, that, that's up to him to do what he's got to do, you know. But, right, right. I but, um, all I know is his personality changed a lot after he got hurt. Mm-hmm. And he got hurt because of his own, his own ego. First of all, he should have been wearing a helmet, the proper equipment. He was overhorsed. He wasn't that great of a horseman. And he was on a very... Big, you know, horses are big animals. Right? Eleven hundred pounds on you, boy. Yeah, you better know how to. You better know how to ride them. And he's jumping. You're talking about jumping. Is it's an art. It's, it's science to it. You know. Oh yeah. <clears throat> so you know he he wasn't prepared like he should have been. And that's all ego. Oh, I can ride this horse, and I can. I don't need a helmet, and I can. You know, like like he's Superman. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he got thrown off the horse, and bam! He hit his. He's lucky he didn't die that day. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, yeah, that was definitely shocking, and you're right. I mean, you got to, yeah. You, yeah, you can't uh, just go on those things uh, sort of haphazardly, and uh, maybe he did that. 
Well, he did. I mean, he didn't. He didn't have. The, he, he should never get on a horse riding like they were doing jumping without the proper equipment. Right. And a helmet is is a mandatory thing. Great, if great riders wear the helmets. Why shouldn't you? And, and it's, it's just kind of foolish. Definitely, and uh, a very tragic consequence. So I mean, uh, it's like going to a sword fight without a sword. Yeah, you know? yeah, you're just asking for trouble. <laughs> <laughs>